Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this KuSmile Mini PC. So this is provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So some specs listed on the back here. The model is the KTM9. This has a 2.1 inch display, has 32 gig of DDR4 memory, has one terabyte NVMe storage with two gig being optional. And this is the two gig model. This has an Intel Core i9. It's the 12,900HK, has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and Windows 11 Pro. Then it shows all the different ports here. So let's get this out. So this talks about the LCD display. So this is going to show the CPU frequency, usage rate, and temperature. That's on page one. On page two, it will have the memory capacity usage rate, and the SSD capacity usage rate, and on three has the network uplink and network downlink. And it talks about the desktop icon to control that. On the back we have a thank you. Let's get the PC out. So we have it here, very compact. Then we have some cables here. This is a HDMI cable. Here's the display port cable. Let's look at that in a sec. Here's a power supply. Output on this is 19 volts at 2.5 amps or 47.5 watts. And here we have a USB hub. It goes from one to four. This is a Visa bracket. That's for mounting it on the back of a monitor. I'm guessing in here we'll have like a manual or something. Yes. So here's the manual. I'm not going to cover everything in here. We'll take a quick look. So it shows what it comes with. Shows how to hook it up. Talks about checking speaker output. This talks about installing a M2 SSD, installing memory, and installing it on a monitor. So let's take a look at this. So if we look on the bottom here, we have rubberized feet and we have these two holes for mounting it to the mounting plate. Here we have HDMI and display ports. We have two USB ports, gigabit ethernet. On the front we have USB-C, two more USB ports, speaker microphone, and that's a CMOS reset. And then we have a power button. So on the top here we have the display. So that will give us the stats that we saw on the card. So I'm going to get this hooked up. So the prongs are gonna pop out of this. So I'll plug that into power. I already have a monitor here. So I'm just going to plug the HDMI into the HDMI port and I'm going to plug in the USB dongle to one of these back USB ports. So these are black, so I'm guessing these might be slower ports than the front ones. Those are probably three in the front. So now I can plug in the power, and I can boot this up. So I'll press power to boot it up. So these lights are lit up on top, and we have the display. So you can see that there. Now it's not really showing a lot because it's still booting. You can see that here. So we have the Windows set up. I'm going to go through this. It's pretty straightforward. Now I have not connected up networking. I find it's easiest to boot up a Windows PC without networking to start. That way it doesn't force you to log in. And then you can connect the network later. And it may at some point ask you to create a Microsoft account and such. So I'm going to go through this and I'll come back when it's finished. Okay, the computer is booted up. First thing I'll do is connect it up to the Wi-Fi. Then I'm going to go down to the start menu. I'm going to go to settings. And I'll go to Windows Update, and I'll say Check All Updates. So I'm going to run these. I may need to restart it a couple times and run it a couple times till everything's up to date, and then we'll come back and we can do some tests and such on it. Okay, so I've installed all of the updates, and I've installed some other software too, so let's do some testing on this. First, let's check out the Wi-Fi. So this has Wi-Fi 6. Here I have a speed test. Now this is on my local network, so this is isolating more or less just the Wi-Fi, so we're not testing internet speed, we're testing just the Wi-Fi speed. So I'll run it. Okay, so we got 553 down and 850 up, and this was a 5 gigahertz test. Now, there are lots of things that can affect this test because I have lots of devices on my 5 gigahertz network. But as you can see, we get very nice speeds out of this. Now, if you want faster speeds, it does have gigabit ethernet on it, and you can plug into that. Next, let's check out the hard drive. So I have Crystal Disk Mark. Now, this computer has a 2 terabyte drive, but it's partitioned into two partitions of 1 gig each, although it calculates out to, it looks like, 901 and 961. So we're going to check the C drive, so I'll run it. Okay, so we finished the test. So for sequential reads, we're getting 2960 megabytes per second, and sequential writes, we're getting 1768. So for the reads, we're getting maybe five to six times what you might see out of a SATA SSD. Of course, this uses an NVMe SSD, so you're gonna see these faster speeds. So I've installed LibreOffice on here. 
Let's try launching it. Okay, so that's launched. This is the first time I've ever run it. Let's close it down. Now the next time we run it, it should cache it and this should open up very quickly. So this is much faster this time. Now I'm going to run a web benchmark. Now uh, this is probably single threaded, but a lot of things we do today are on the web. So this will give you an idea of the performance you can get on a web browser. So we got 18.9. So you can compare that to other computers. If you have a current computer, you could run this same benchmark and see how this compares. Of course, this has the display on top and we're kind of sitting idle right now. We're running at say 0.8 gigahertz and usage is 1% and the temp is 37C. Now, if we want to see other stats, we can just swipe it. We can see our network speed here. We're sitting at zero and then we can see our RAM usage and SSD usage. So it has the three different screens. You can swipe back and forth either direction and it looks really crisp. Now I'm going to run that web benchmark again and we'll see this number increase here as it's running. So here it popped up to two gigahertz. And you can see the temp is increasing also. Now that the benchmark is finished, we'll see this drop down. So it goes back towards idle speed. Now you can also play games on this. Let me get a game loaded up. So here I have the beginning of Half-Life. We can move around here. I'm not real familiar with this game. So this has Intel Iris XE built-in graphics. Now you may not get as good a performance as a high-end discrete graphics card, but I'd say this is pretty good and you can play a lot of games, especially older games or games at lower settings. It may not play the latest games at the highest settings, but I find that built-in graphics these days have pretty good capabilities. I pulled the back off so I could take a look inside. So it has these feet on here, they're self-adhesive. You peel those off and there are screws behind it. It has a zero size filled screw. I pulled those out. And here we can see the two DIMM modules, it's DDR4. Now it has two 16 gig modules in here. If I understand correctly, this processor would actually support dual 32 gig modules for a total of 64 gig. And then here we have our two terabyte NVMe SSD. Now it doesn't look like the Wi-Fi is on a separate card. I can see the antennas here on the perimeter. But if I look under here, it doesn't look like it's plugged in. It might be baked onto the board or on the other side. Now I'm not gonna pull the whole thing out, but it wouldn't be too hard to upgrade the RAM or SSD in this. So that's the Kusmile Mini PC. I really like the specs and performance of this little PC. You have an Intel Core i9 with 14 cores and 20 threads, so it'd be great for multi-processing. It also has 32 gig RAM standard and two terabyte hard drive, so you have really good specs on this. It's a very small package. Now I hooked up an HDMI monitor, but it also has DisplayPort, and you can plug a monitor into USB-C, so you can support three displays with this right out of the box. And then it comes with the two USB-A in the front, two USB-A in the back, and these are USB 3.0. And then you do have the little hub here if you need more ports. So lots of expansion on this. Now you can leave this right on your desktop or you can use that bracket and mount it to the back of a monitor and that gives you a really compact setup. If you do that, you get a really short HDMI cable and makes for a super, super clean setup. Now, along with the basic features, this has a special feature of having a screen on it so we can monitor our CPU and our temps and our network speeds all from the top of the computer. So a PC like this would be great for productivity work if you're doing coding, writing, web work, but it's powerful enough that you can also do gaming on it or at least light gaming, or things that don't require a high-end discrete CPU. So if you're looking for a mini PC with some good specs, I think this is a great option. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.